Rather than lads, welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. It is March Day. We're going to be diving into Leicester Arsenal, my preview, my starting lineup, and also what I expect, my prediction uh, in this one. Straightforward, I think Arsenal will win it. I always give my prediction at the end of the video, but in this one, because I want to have a conversation with you in the comment section, I want us to dive into the predictions first. It's Arsenal win. It's an Arsenal win. Look, Leicester City have not beaten Arsenal in a very long time at the Emirates Stadium. It's around 26 games. They've not won. They have a very, very bad away record. And I think uh, it, coming at the Emirates Stadium at this point in time is the worst experience they can have. Arsenal are absolutely confident. We are flying with confidence and we are flying um, with um, absolutely very good performances. So for me, Leicester City do not survive this. I've started off with my prediction, Arsenal 3, Leicester City 1. Now, we last, uh, we last won two consecutive uh, games uh, at the beginning of the season without conceding in 1971-1972. So, it is highly likely that we will concede. And, and if you look at that attacking you know, firepower for Leicester City, uh, Yuri Telemann's person, Daka... Uh, Harvey Barnes. I think they can. I think they can grab a goal. So I will go three-one. But it's gonna be a very long afternoon uh, for Leicester City. They are coming in the, you know, in London at the Emirates Stadium in a very very sunny environment, a very hot, you know, very hot temperatures. I don't see how they are going to survive. But in the comment section, uh, talk to me. What is your score prediction and who is going to score? I think um, Gabriel Martinelli will score for us. Gabriel Jesus will get his first goal um, of the campaign. And I think he will actually score uh, two. So I've gone with Gabriel Jesus, two goals and one goal for Gabriel uh, Martinelli. But in the comment section, talk to me and let me know what your thoughts are. Hit that like button. Let's get this video to 1,000 likes. Subscribe to the podcast as well. We're very close to 57,000 uh, subscribers. Let's dive into it. Now, I want us to dive into the starting 11 because that is uh, primarily, primarily the reason as to why we do this video, uh, trying to predict who starts and who uh, doesn't start for us. With Mikel Arteta now, we have seen it. Uh, it is pretty straight for, you know, st straightforward. The, the, team he, you know, the team he wants, the 11 that he wants, has already uh, taken shape. We know who starts where, and it's it's just a matter of uh, you know, a few changes. Kirantian is starting probably uh, ahead of Alexander Zichenko. Probably uh, Granit Xhaka dropping out of the lineup, in my opinion, which I don't see happening. Uh, but the starting eleven, the Mikel Arteta, uh, you know, wants to play this whole season for me has already been decided. But in terms of the team news, I would love also to t let you know that um. Fabio Vieira is back in full training. Now, a few leaks are claiming that he will be part of the squad, but he might not be part of the starting 11, uh, just as expected. We are also expecting uh, a few other, you know, incomings, including, uh, you know, Carantini, uh, back to full fitness, and also, uh, you know, and, and also Tomiyasu as well. Now, Rhys Nelson will not be part of us. It is a bad injury that he has sustained, according to Mikel Arteta at the moment. We do not know when he returns. But it is not a good injury. It actually doesn't look very, very good. So uh, then let's dive into my starting lineup. Uh, the Arsenal will be using against Leicester City. In goal, it is now um, known. Aaron Ramsdale is the goalkeeper that uh, Mikel Arteta has decided that he will be his uh, main number nine. And personally, I do not have a problem with that. My only problem with um. Uh, with 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 Arsenal is the backup to Aaron Ramsdale because we've seen he's not a man of glass, which is very very good. But also you've got to ask yourself if he's not in there, then does um uh does does Matt Turner give us that uh that that quality? Does he can he cover for us um you know in moments when Aaron Ramsdale is actually not uh, not around? But Ramsdale quality goalkeeper, I think we won that Crystal Palace game. Because of a couple of reasons, William Saliba is a Rolls Royce defending, of course. Um, Martin Odegaard's, you know, captain, uh, you know, captaincy, and and a, a couple of other reasons. But we seem to forget the role played by Aaron Ramsdale in that game. If Arsenal do not get those two quality saves from Ramsdale, it's two two, it's two two. And trust me. Uh, I think Crystal Palace had a chance to lead that game because if Ocean Edwards header goes 
into the back of the net. Um, if uh, if Eberiza Aze's chance goes to the back of the net, they would be leading that game two goals to one. And it would have been even harder for us to find that game uh, and, and and make it you know make it a two two. Because after the first fifteen game minutes of the, in in that game, we became absolutely casual and absolutely regular and i think crystal palace were the better team uh for the rest of the game but uh Aaron ramsdale that performance those performances um are what you want from your uh number one goalkeeper right so um at center back and also uh, in the back four i think it's now pretty much clear uh gabriel Magalis is going to be a key player for arsenal this season uh Look, I don't think Arsenal do have another um, left-sided centre-back. So we do not have one. Whenever you see me doing my predicted lineup, whenever you see me doing my starting lineup, it's always Gabriel uh, at left centre-back. But William Saliba, after proving to be very, very vital uh, in that Crystal Palace game, I think he will be playing alongside him again. Um, and and we've, I think he was man of the match uh, in that game. Very important crucial blocks for Arsenal. Very, very important. I think, you know, he really helped out uh, Ben White to deal with uh, uh, the, the Wilfred Zaha threat. And I think Ben White was very, very solid as well because players like Wilfred Zaha, one of the best dribblers in the Premier League, one of the best uh, wingers in the league, to deal with him uh, uh, when you're playing out of position, there, 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 there is a lot of credit uh, to give to Ben White. Massive credit. Uh, but for me, that is uh, the centre-back pairing that we should see uh, this afternoon. Of course, at right-back, uh, it should be uh, Ben White. I, I don't think Mikel will want to, uh, will want to risk uh, Tomiyasu. Uh, it's going to be Ben White. I hope I'm right about this. Right? I hope I'm right about this. So Ben White, Saliba, and Gabriel at left back will be Alexander Zinchenko. Now, the last time we looked for Alexander Zinchenko, um, we did not find him. And I, I do not intend to waste a lot of time uh, with this create formation up. But I think Alexander Zinchenko will play uh, at left back. Now, I understand that um, I, I understand that um, that Mikel Arteta loves Karantiani a lot. And uh, of all the players that he didn't sign, uh, of, of all the players that we signed under the Unai Emery era, uh, Karantina has only been uh, as only uh, is the only player to have found that consistency in terms of uh, the starting eleven. The problem with Karantina, obviously, is um uh, is, is fitness. He can't find uh, himself enough game time. But if he can, uh, he will be playing as part of that back four. Now, Alexander Zichenko, of course, that means he can be, you know, can be playing in his favorite uh, spot in the midfield where he plays for us in either that double pivot. We can not play um, in that, uh, you know, in, in that second number eight role. Uh, so if, 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 if pr provided we played uh, a 4-1-4-1 four, one, four, one, uh, and we used two attacking midfielders, then Alexander Zichenko would be the second attacking midfielder um, uh, apart from Martin Odegaard. So for me, um, Karantiani will not start in this one. I've, I've only put him there because um, Zichenko does not appear in this app. Uh, but I think Zichenko starts at left back. Now, in midfield, of course, it has always been Thomas Partey um, uh, being flanked by two number eights. Thomas Partey had a very very average performance against Crystal Palace. Now, many of you might not agree with me, and, and I will be very okay for you to argue against my point, but he had a very average performance against Crystal Palace. And, you, you know, when Arsenal play well, look at one guy, Thomas Partey. When we play poorly, look at one guy, Thomas Partey. I'm not saying he is to blame, or uh, he takes all the credit when we play well, but what I'm trying to say here is that the role he plays in the Arsenal side, the role he plays as a midfield base, is more than uh, is more than important. It is more than crucial. So uh, for me, Partey he needs to step up his game. Uh, I think he's had a few issues here and there, uh, horrendous uh, horrendous accusations um, and things like that. But he needs to find his form. He needs to find his form. He didn't play very well against Crystal Palace. Um, Granny Jacker obviously has always flanked him uh, to the left-hand side of um, uh, the midfield. I think he will continue doing that. Uh, and so will Martin Odegaard on the right-hand side 
uh, of the midfield. But my, my only fear with um, or with this midfield three is it's been consistent, which is actually uh, quite a positive because it comes from last. Uh, it, it comes from it shares that kind of consistency and uh, and and cohesion from last campaign. But the question here, lads, is thinking about you know thinking about uh, Odegaard and uh, and Jaka. Is that the best we can provide this campaign? Yes, there is Fabio Vieira as well. But Xhaka and Odegaard, is that the best creative force in midfield we can provide? In my opinion, uh, we can still do better. Mikel said we are still in the market. And we better be for a central attacking midfielder or for a central uh, midfielder overall. Because it will cost us. It will cost us, and it will be absolutely embarrassing for Arsenal not to sign um, a, a, a central midfielder. There are many of them right now. You you could pick you, you could pick them as grains of rice on the market now. Look, everything is expensive. Uh, fuel the fuel prices all over the world have gone have just gone high, and mid uh, surprisingly, central midfield prices have just gone down. How Samoa is available for around 20 million euros, you get him. Uh, you would have done them a huge service uh, if you pay that. Lucas Paqueta is available uh, for around 40 million euros uh, or probably f uh, 45 million euros. For me, that's a handsome price. Um, uh, Ruben Neves would be available for around 60 million euros. Adrian Rabio is available as well. I, mean, I know you're going to say, don't talk about Adrian Rabio. But in my, you know, what I'm trying to say here, lads, is. This midfield, guys, is not good enough. It's not good enough. Not yet there, at least. Okay, at le left wing, Gabriel Martinelli scored in our opening game uh, against um, uh, against uh, Crystal Palace. So he starts in that position. He should be rewarded. Bukayo Saka on the right has made himself the most reliable Arsenal player um, of all time. And Gabriel Asus should be scoring his first goal of the campaign because I have him in my FPL. If he doesn't score in this game, I will have to be forced to uh, kick him out of my team. There is nothing to do. I'll kick him out of my team. Honestly, what should I do? If he doesn't score in this one, he didn't score in the other one. And if he doesn't score in this one, I'm losing points. I should be winning the FPL in the world. Uh, that is my target this, uh, this, this year. And if he doesn't score... Of course, Salah did bail me out because Salah scored. So if he doesn't score, I'm kicking him out and I'm introducing Ivan Tony because Tony scored against Leicester, right? So Gabriel Asu should score against Leicester as well. I'm kidding. But anyway, uh, that is my starting 11. Uh, I hope we can agree that Ramsdale, Tierney, Gabriel, Saliba, White with one change, which is uh, Alexander Zinchenko for Tierney, Xhaka, Pate, Odegaard, Saka, Gabriel Jesus and M Martinelli should be the starting lineup uh, this afternoon. Now, a key, uh, there, there are a few key statistics as we enter um, uh, this game. And one of them that I, I, I would want to share with you is that Leicester City have lost all three of their last Premier League games uh, as they visit Arsenal. Arsenal have scored seven goals in those games and just conceding one. The last time we beat them uh, four times in a row, it was 1999-2000 season. We beat the, uh, be, uh, sorry, not 2000 season, but uh, between 1999 and, and 2000, we beat them four times in a row. So Leicester, uh, that shows you they are really, really struggling against Arsenal and that is what we actually won. But there's a problem that we have, uh, as, uh, Arsenal have also lost six of their last 12 Premier League games uh, in August. Uh, but we do not particularly do poorly in August because before that run, we had gone 15 games, 15 games um, in August, winning 14 and drawing uh, and losing one. So August is not a bad month for us, no? Uh, do not be scared. So, but in the recent events, it has actually not been uh, the best month, okay? So August, we've lost six out of the last 12. We need to clear, uh, uh, you know, we need to clear and, and, and better that statistic uh, right there. Leicester City have kept one clean sheet in the last 26 away Premier League games, and that was against Burnley. They, have, they do not keep clean sheets. So if, you are, if you're going to bet on this one, 
then go for an Arsenal win, in my opinion. Go for, look, do not blame me, but go for an Arsenal win, right? Um, I think it will actually work out. But if you if I look at um uh, how Leicester could line up, because that is also absolutely key uh, on how you know they could actually field today. Um, in goal, you you expect Danny Ward. They've lost uh they've lost their their their, their uh number one choice goalkeeper. That is uh, uh Peter Schmeichel to to France. I think he went to Lens. So you expect Danny Ward to be in goal. Um, for them, you expect Johnny Evans, Daniel Amate, and Wesley Fofana to be at, to, to line up in a back three. Then um, uh, James Justin, Drisbury Hall, Wilfred Didi, Yuri Telemans, and Timothy Castagna uh, in the midfield five. James Madison slightly behind Jamie uh, Vardy. Now, their opening game against Brentford... Uh, they th they had the opportunity to pick up three points. They led 2-0 at the King Paul Stadium. But the problem was that um, they are slippery defensive-wise. They are absolutely uh, slippery. But James Madison had a very, very huge role uh, in that game. I think he really started off well, very well. Drew's um, uh, uh, very whole as well. The goal he scored was absolutely uh, phenomenal. But overall, I think they had a very good game. If you look at the performances of their players here on surface goal, uh, it actually explains everything, right? Uh, they, have, um, uh, they have a 7 from uh, 7 out of 10. Ranking James Madison, Timothy Castagna, seven out of ten, Wesley Fofana, seven out of ten, Yuri Tillman, seven out of ten, and Drewsbury Hall, seven out of ten. Closely followed by Wilfred Didi, six point eight, uh, and James Justin, six point eight. So that shows you they didn't actually play very poorly. The problem is that they conceded, and uh, I also think somehow they lacked, they lacked the super, you know, that super. Uh, how should I call it? Th 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 those superb performances from a goalkeeper and a talent like Kasper Schmeichel. Because for me, uh, the first goal they conceded, poor, horrendous defending. Absolutely horrendous. But the second goal, um, I just might feel like Kasper Schmeichel's reflexes could have actually kept that shot out. So, overall, they played well, but they don't stand a chance against Arsenal. Arsenal have a chance to go top of the table if we can win this game. Uh, if we can win this um, uh, this game by uh, a handsome margin, I will show you uh, the Premier League table, and you will be excited uh, to see it right here. Okay, so there we go. So uh, right here, this is uh, the Premier League table right now. Tottenham, Bournemouth, Arsenal, Spurs. Uh, have a better goal difference than Arsenal. That is three. And that means if we win uh, with a better goal difference than um, uh, than Tottenham Hotspur, then we will go uh, uh, on top of the table. Tottenham take on Chelsea. It's our opportunity. It's our only chance uh, to get you know, an early position at the top of the table. Manchester City are also coming in very closely. Uh, so we need to win with a heavy margin, like three goals to nail, right? 3-1. 3-0, 4-1. If we can do that, then we are very, very sure that even if Spurs uh, win the game, I didn't show you the table. That's, that is how the table looks like. Uh, and, and, and I'm quite optimistic that these other teams, yes, uh, you know, we're going to be playing in a goal rush, but these other teams do have, I think they have a slim chance of getting ahead of us. So one thing we need to do is secure the win first. That takes us to six points. I think Bournemouth will not win the second game uh, in a row. They're playing Manchester City. Good for you. Uh, City will win, honestly. So that's why we need goals. Manche uh, Newcastle, Brighton, and Leeds United all have the same number of points as Arsenal. Uh, but I think not all of them will win this weekend. So Arsenal, a chance for us to go on top of the table. And Leicester want to... Um, rectify the mistakes they made last come uh, last last weekend but apart from that i think comfortable win for us no and i will see you in the match reaction and the build up as well